What's up, everyone? Terry here, and I'm going to go in detail about the difference between root mean squared speed versus the average speed, and discuss why we may want to consider the root mean squared speed rather than the average speed in calculations. So I'm going to go through an example here, and imagine we have an object of mass m, just like a ball or something, and it's moving with speed v. And we don't care about the direction, uh, but it's just moving with speed v here. And let's say we have three of these masses. And they're all moving at their own different speeds here. And each mass is five kilo, uh, kilograms. So each mass is five kilograms. And this first mass is moving at one meters per second. And the second mass is moving at two meters per second. And the third mass is moving at three meters per second here. Now, we're going to calculate the kinetic energy because I, I think the kinetic energy is a great way to show the difference between root mean square speed and average speed. So to calculate the kinetic energy of each one of these, we do one half mv squared. So for the first one, it's one half times five times one squared, and we get 2.5 joules. Second one, we get 10 joules if we do one half mv squared. And the third one, uh, 22.5 uh, joules here, one half mv squared. Yeah, so we have the speeds of each object, the kinetic energies of the objects, and let's calculate the average speed for this system here, and the average kinetic energy as well. We just add them all up and divide by 3. So the average speed is 2. 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3 is 2. That's to get the average. And the average kinetic energy is, well, we just add them all up, 2.5 plus 10 plus 22.5 divided by 3. The average kinetic energy is 11.7. Now I have this in yellow because this is the true kinetic average kinetic energy because we took each kinetic energy and divided it by 3 after summing them up. But we could also calculate the average kinetic energy using the average speed, or at least try to. If we type in 1 half, now the average mass is 5 kilograms, multiply it by the average speed squared, we get 10 joules. It's actually under. So the kinetic energy from the average speed is gives us a, a poor, uh, does not give us the average kinetic energy here. It actually, it's too low. So how can we redeem ourselves? Well, we use the root mean squared speed. V squared is just one squared for the first one, two squared for the second one, three squared for the next one, so nine. And then if we calculate the resulting kinetic energies, Remember, kinetic energy is just one half mv squared, but we already have the mv squared. So one half times the mass times one squared is 2.5, 10 for the second one, and 22.5 for the third one. So not surprising, we got the same kinetic energy for each object by using v squared rather than v. We just squared it first, order of operations. Um, but if we look at the averages here, if we look at the averages here, if we take the average velocity or speed squared, the average of these is 4.7. And the average kinetic energy here, if we take the average, add these all up, divide by 3, we still get 11.7 joules. This average here is we're taking v squared 1 plus v squared 2 plus v squared 3. And then we want the average of that. So we're going to divide all of that by 3 to get the average. That's different than calculating the average speed and then squaring it. So here, if we were to calculate the average speed and then square it, we would take v1 plus v2 plus v3 divided by 3. This is the average speed. And then if we wanted to square it to calculate the kinetic energy, we would square it after taking the average. Whereas here, we're squaring the speeds first adding them up, and then taking the average. So we're taking the average after we, we square them. And we calculate the average kinetic energy this way. Kinetic av average, average kinetic energy is 1 half m. Now the average mass is 5 kilograms. V squared is now 4.7. And if we plug this into our calculator, 1 half times the mass times this, this is our V squared, we truly get the average kinetic energy here. So using V squared, we can calculate the average kinetic energy. Now, we, when, root, when we say root mean squared speed, root 
mean square speed. Root mean square speed is what we're doing here, except we're taking the square root of this whole thing. We, first, we square. We kind of we we look at this from right to left. So the root mean square speed. First, we square each speed. Plus v three squared. Uh, well, we we square them. I won't, we don't add them yet. So first we square it, and then we take the mean. So by taking the mean, we add them all up, divide by the number of objects. In this case, there's three. And then after that, we take the square root here. And that's our root mean squared. But if we take the square root of 4.7 square root, that's 2.17 approximately. So for us, it's 2.17 meters per second. The this is our root mean square speed. 2.17 meters per second is actually larger than our average speed. Root mean square speed is more useful often when we're dealing with energies because we've already taken into the fact that it's squared here. So we've squared it first. So when we square the root mean square speed here and we calculate the average kinetic energy based on that, say the average kinetic energy based on one half m squared of the root mean square speed, this works out. We can calculate the average kinetic energy this way, one half times five kilograms times 2.17 meters per second squared. Here we're using the root mean squared speed. And if we plug that in, 0.5 times five times 2.17 squared equals 11.8. Oh, I got 11.7 here. I don't know why this says 11.7 versus 11. .8. Oh, probably because of rounding errors say 11.8 meters per second, uh, well, not meters per second squared, meters per second. If we, if we kept all our digits and didn't round, we would end up getting the exact same number. So root mean square speed, more important when we're dealing with energies usually. And finally, I wanted to show you how the kinetic energy relates to the root mean squared speed graphically by showing you a graph of the kinetic energy, the translational kinetic energy, versus the velocity squared of the objects. And this is our graph here. So on the y-axis, we have kinetic energy in joules. And on the x-axis, we have our speed squared here in meters squared per second squared. And if we plot this, we get, big surprise here, we get a straight line. <laughs> and we get a straight line, as you know, because kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So 1 half m, this is, these, this is a constant here. So the kinetic energy is linearly proportional to v squared. It's linearly proportional, so we have a straight line here. And the middle number here of this v squared is like around here, 4.7, 4.7. That's the square of the root mean squared speed. So the root mean squared speed, RMS, equals the square root of our the average of the v squared here. So if we take... So this is the average of the v squared. So if we look at all, these are the v squares. And if we look at the average number in between these here, the average number is about 4.7. Now the square root of that is the root mean square speed. And if we calculate the kinetic energy from the root mean square speed, we're going to square it. This will be our v root mean squared speed corresponds to the middle number of the kinetic energy because these are linearly proportional. Great. Awesome. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.